Over the years, the FBI have caught criminals whose crimes elevate beyond the scope of local law enforcement. As you can imagine, there are some truly horrible people who have been taken in by the FBI, but quite a few have kept the bureau on its toes. I'm Adam Andrews with Most Amazing, and this is the top 10 evil people in history who managed to evade the FBI. Let us know in the comments if you have actually heard any of these names before watching this video. I'm kind of curious to know if you have. And at number 10 is Ted Kaczynski. Ted Unabomber Kaczynski was an anarchist and a mathematical prodigy. He excelled academically from an early age and has an insanely high IQ of 167. He made it into Harvard University at just 16 years old and ultimately gained a PhD in mathematics from the University of Michigan. Now, Not too much later, he had become an assistant professor at the University of California, Berkeley, but after handing in his resignation, things started to go downhill. The Unabomber became a hermit and moved to a remote cabin in Lincoln, Montana. Between 1978 and 1995, he took the lives of three people and injured 23 others with homemade explosive devices. His manifesto was published in the Washington Post after being sent to the press anonymously, and it explained that the devices were extreme but necessary to attract attention to the erosion of human freedom necessitated by modern technologies requiring large-scale organization. I didn't write that in case you were curious. I didn't, that wasn't me. Anyways, he was caught when his brother read the letters in the news, recognized Ted's handwriting, and tipped off the FBI. The Unabomber was finally caught and sentenced to life in prison with no possibility of parole. Number 9. Andrew Cunanan Andrew Cunanan was incredibly intelligent as well, with an IQ of 147, but Cunanan was also a tactical liar. He would claim that his father was an Israeli millionaire and he displayed early signs of antisocial personality disorder. To fund the lavish lifestyle that he craved, Cunanan would make friends of wealthy older men, which worked out for him when he moved in with millionaire Norman Blatchford, who treated him to luxury cars and vacations in southern France. But that didn't last as Blatchard finally had enough of Cunanan and he was thrown out. Now this hit to his ego led to the passing of at least five different people including Chicago tycoon Lee Miglin and Gianni Versace on July 15, 1997. In June of 1997, Cunanan became the 449th fugitive to be listed on the FBI's 10 most wanted fugitives list. It wasn't too much longer after the passing of Versace that Andrew's body was discovered in a Miami Beach houseboat having taken his own life. Number 8. Thomas James Holden Thomas James Holden was the first man to ever make the most wanted list of the FBI, so he kind of had to make this list. His criminal career began in the 1920s with the robbery of a mail train and didn't stop there at all. In 1930, he escaped from Leavenworth Penitentiary and was recaptured on a golf course in Kansas City. He was on parole in 1949 and drinking with his wife and her two brothers when an argument broke out resulting in Holden taking the life of all three, then fleeing with the FBI on his trail. He evaded them for quite some time, but the FBI caught him 13 months later after receiving a tip from a man in Oregon. Just a reminder, if you guys are enjoying what you're seeing, make sure to give us a like. It's all we really need to feel your support. Thanks guys. Number 7. James Earl Ray While Holden was the first man to make the list, James Earl Ray was the first man to make the most wanted list twice. His first crime is his most famous as he was first wanted by the FBI for taking the life of Martin Luther King Jr. in 1968. He was captured two months later when a customs official at Heathrow Airport recognized his alias from a Canadian wanted list, but in 1977 he escaped from a Tennessee penitentiary, leading him to be put back on that list, but not for too long as three days later he was recaptured and a year was added to his sentence, bringing it up to a grand total of 100 years, which kind of seems a little pointless, but I, I get it. Number 6. Victor Manuel Garena While not the most evil, especially compared to most of the others on this list, Victor Manuel Garena, or Garena has the longest membership on the FBI's most wanted list. In 1984, Garena was a Wells Fargo security guard who turned on two fellow workers in their Wells Fargo armored car. He isn't the most evil because all he did to the two other co-workers is tie them up, but he then fled with seven million dollars taken from the truck and was literally never seen again. To this day, the FBI is still offering a million dollar reward for information leading to his arrest. It would be insane if he happened to actually be caught at this point. Number 5. Omar August Pinson Omar August Pinson brings us back to the more evil side of things as he was convicted of 
slaying an on duty Oregon police officer before he made a jailbreak. Omar managed to evade capture on the run for almost a year and even made it out of a shootout in January 1950 with Montana police completely unscathed. The problem for Pinson here came when a car salesman identified him and gave the FBI enough clues to track him down. He was recaptured in September 1950 and returned to prison making parole in the early 70s. Number 4 William Bradford Bishop Jr. William Bradford Bishop Jr. made the list for pretty brutally taking the life of his wife, mother, and and he disappeared in 1976. In the next few years, witnesses claim to have seen him in several different locations overseas, but he still hasn't been caught. Bishop wasn't added to the FBI's most wanted list until 2014 when the Bureau had produced an age advanced image of him to aid in his capture, but it failed to turn up any leads. And two years later, he was dropped from the list again. He would now be 84 years old if he is still alive, but we just might not ever know, which is kind of not a great feeling. Number 3 Robert William Fisher Robert Fisher is actually on the current FBI most wanted list for taking the life of his wife and their two children before blowing up the house that they all lived in, in Scottsdale, Arizona in April 2001. He was described as a cruel and distant control freak towards his family. He and his wife would fight a lot and Fisher was embarrassed that his son Bobby did not like to hunt or fish and once tried to teach him and his daughter how to swim by throwing them off of a boat. Fisher was also very controlling about the house they lived in, not allowing the walls in the house to be painted anything other than white and only a small number of pictures were allowed on the wall. Any sentimental object of his wife's had to be kept hidden away. He's still out there, so watch out. Number two, Eduardo Ravello. Guess what? I have another guy who is included on the current FBI's most wanted list. Just to keep you a little on your toes, you know? Eduardo Ravello was indicted in Texas in 2008 for his alleged involvement in racketeering activities, conspiracy to launder monetary instruments, aka money, and conspiracy to possess substances with the intent to distribute them. His criminal activities began in 2003, and Ravello is known to be a captain within the Barrio Azteca American Mexican Criminal Enterprise, and is allegedly responsible for issuing orders to the Barrio Azteca members who allegedly act as hitmen for an even bigger substance organization. Apparently, in total, they are responsible for a whole number of lost lives. Ravello himself has ties to Mexico and El Paso, Texas, and it's presumed that he may have had plastic surgery and altered his fingerprints, but he's still out and about at the moment. And in at number one is Ted Bundy. I bet you were wondering if more recognizable names would show up on this list. Well, you were right. The vicious serial killer Ted Bundy was actually a two-time member of the FBI's most wanted list, who committed his first known killing in 1974. Following his first, Bundy unfortunately took 12 more lives during his time until one of his victims escaped, but even then, before he could actually be arrested in 1975, he did it again five more times. During his 1977 trial, he escaped from the courthouse through a window and was most wanted for six days before recapture. But like I said, he was on that list twice as later that year he escaped again. He committed three more attacks and took two more lives before finally being stopped for driving a stolen car. Thankfully this monster can never escape again as he was put to the electric chair in 1989. Well, there we are. I'm Adam Andrews. You amazing people are watching most amazing. Thank you guys so much for watching by the way. And uh, doodles for pretty brutally taking the wife of his, taking the wife, damn. Robert Fisher is actually on the current FBI most wanted list for taking the wife, I did it again. I actually wrote it, that's so dumb, okay. And conspiracy to possess, and conspiracy to, and conspiracy to,